And it's every 11 years or so. And, and 2012 was one of the times where when this happened, technically, there's, there's thousands of days in between these pole shifts on the planet, on sun, where most of these big flares happen. Thousands of days in between them. If the flares would have happened just nine days different than they had, a third, if not half, of the planet would have gone into absolute darkness. Just, we missed it by nine days. It just so happens that when it happened, the flare happened on the side of the sun that wasn't coming in our direction. Now, the next is coming in just a couple of years. The next pole shift, the next flare storm, I'm gonna call it, is just a couple years away. And then after that, another 11 years, and after that, another 11 years, and it gets us pretty darn close to 2038, an important date predicted by Edgar Casey. but I'm not gonna go into all the prophecy and all that right now. The bottom line is, even the solar flares are part of what's happening in the changes in our lives. So l let me conclude that with just this. What's interesting is, what we need to happen versus what we don't want to happen is if the magnetic field of the sun, there's a magnetic field and of these flares, if the magnetic field of the earth is in alignment with the magnetic field of these flares and of the sun, everything will be fine. If not, this is going to mark 20, the time we're going into 2025, and then another 11 years and another 11 years. The next sets of a couple of sets of 11 years are gonna be huge marking changes for the planet. But if the flares happen, solar flares have a huge impact. The first time we know historically that we had technology, that when we had finally an industrial age in technologies and a major solar flare happened, it knocked down all the systems. Now everybody's completely reliant on those systems. So everything will shut down. Internet's gonna shut down, electric companies are gonna shut down, You're, you know, in some cars. So things are gonna shut down. It's gonna be like a dark ages, guys. It's going to be part of the changes that are coming. The, the dark night of the world, okay? Now, just to, to, to wrap this exciting part up, um, <clears throat> did you hear what I was saying? If we are in alignment, our magnetic field, which is kind of like saying our emotional body, if we're in alignment with that of the sun, it'll be fine. It's if we're not in alignment, magnetic field to make. Well, what does that mean? The sun is the symbol of God and the Christ consciousness. So if mankind is not in alignment, the solar flares will have a devastating effect on this planet. Not maybe, it's gonna happen. And it's gonna happen in one of these sets of 11 in the next you know, 20 years or so, give or take, which I've been saying for a long, long time, but you know, science, it takes them a while to catch up. So they're catching up and they're going, wow, you know, this, is, this is serious. So all I'm saying is that's how third dimensional this is. That's how real this all is these changes coming to this planet. But I love the symbolism. I love the symbolism. We have to be in alignment or else. Well, how did we not ever hear that before? Of course we did. But now it's being shown to us on a galactic level. Get it together, get your priorities straight. And I was thinking this morning, you know, I wonder what we're gonna talk about when I get here. And sometimes I just ask you, what do you wanna talk about? And then, <laughs> strangely enough, I, I stopped and I was getting ready and started brushing my teeth and this download started. And I'm like, I'm brushing my teeth, wait, wait, give me a minute. I gotta, I gotta make a note of some, some kind or a, you know, whatever. Um, I swear, and it was kind of funny and it, it's, it just kept coming. So he, here's what I wanna share in relation to these major changes. Part of the download was, in, go ahead and share the solar, da da da, you know. But healing, healing in the new age. I want to address because healing, I'm not talking about foot rubs. I'm talking about consciousness. So <clears throat> health and healing went through a radical change when, when we started the 1900s, 20th century. Edgar Cayce and 
and, and even a little bit more mainstream characters like Kellogg, um, who had these spas for people. It was unheard of. Spas with, with uh, water therapies and colonics and all these things to, 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 and, and, and the importance of the digestive system to our health and so on and so on. Great, great pioneers of that time. But in the 60s, halfway through that century, it, it took another leap. The 60s, people started accepting massage and herbology, and then it kept progressing. Acupuncture, acupressure, chiropractic care, and so on. Not that they were invented in the 60s. I'm saying they became more accepted. Those healing arts were essentially saying you're not just a body, you're a multi-layered being. Holistic meant the whole you, right? So it's like, so the, those healing arts were really prioritizing on the body and your energy systems. I know they call it body, mind, soul, but most of them didn't incorporate the soul. They were just more advanced, and now we're going another level. So at that time, the 60s, even up until now, there's this greater development and acceptance of healing arts that affected the body and these unknown things called energy systems, your chakras, your meridians, and so on. And, and in the later part of all this, sound healing became one of the newest healing arts. It's always been here. I mean, ancients practiced it. But for it to become a little bit more mainstream acceptable. And what's nice is it works on, everything works on the cells and the body, but also energy systems. So it's kind of cool. And we're thinking, well, that's kind of cool. That's the highest, right? Vibrational healing. It's the highest for the body and energy systems. But there are is a download happening where new levels of healing are now coming in. And you might go, oh, that must be uh, herbal and aromatherapy. No, no. Nothing that is material, because we're going out of material bodies. We're getting our focus to ascend out of being simply material beings with potentially energy systems. We're like, we got that. So now we're going to a new, the 21st century version of healing, which is going to be what? Not just more massage and more aromatherapy and more sound. It's not. Those will still be here for a bit because we're segueing from still healing the body and energy systems to something else. I'm going to call the psyche. Emotions. And this is only a bridge between the next, which is simply spirit. So we're entering the bridge between, finally, holistic health, getting a greater idea about physical and energy healing. Then eventually, pure spiritual knowing, no illness. Something in between, the psyche. And the psyche, how do you heal the psyche? What does it even mean? I, I swear, I don't think this is known. I don't think Anybody's talking, I, I mean, they might throw out some words, but I don't think anybody is knowing this yet or teaching this yet. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. This is the Divine Mother that says, all right, kids, children, we're going to start downloading a new healing art. And it's not going to be that there's a, a, a school. Um, there's no teachers that learned it from some other teachers. If you have acupuncture, we're still, if we do acupuncture, we're studying something that's thousands of years old, but it was taught and handed down. Well, those, where did those come from? Spirit downloaded those to people. The, the Hindu people practicing Ayurveda, where did they get that? Well, some guy came up with it. No, <laughs> they say the gods downloaded it to them. So now we're going into a new age of healing arts, but they're not they're not technical skills at all. <clears throat> These new healing arts, I'm going to name four out of seven primary healing arts that are coming to the world. The first, affection. Well, wait, what do you mean? How's affection a healing art? It's a healing art. For people to feel warmth, uh, tenderness, you know, exploring the power of touch is, is healing for people. It's especially healing to certain parts of ourselves, root chakra, for example. But affection, and I've done talks just on the healing power of affection. 
The problem is an unhealed world trying to practice these healing arts, these new healing arts, and affection's not new, but I'm saying it's gonna be now utilized as a healing art, a legitimate healing art. The same as massage could be accepted in this day, tomorrow, affection. Now, it doesn't mean there's gonna be like necessarily a, a clinic. Hi, welcome, okay, next. <laughs> you know, I, I can't say that because there, there are no teachers. The teachers of these skills are being taught by the mother, the Holy Spirit. And hang in, because this, I don't know how far out this all sounds to y'all, but this is being downloaded from the mother. So she's doing what was once done where they said the, the you know, uh, higher dimensional beings, the gods downloaded healing, it's gonna be the same way. The mother, her, her light beings and her arch archangels and angels, they're downloading it to the first wave of healers of this nature, psyche, psyche healers. <clears throat> so this is being downloaded and <clears throat> these, this first wave of healers is then going to bring that to the world. How much it becomes a, a clinical thing, uh, it's, it's up to mankind. But it's not needing to be in a clinic kind of an environment. The, any, any of these things I'm gonna name. The second healing art is compassion. I know you've heard of these, so you go, well, that's, this isn't new. What's new is to hear that these are gonna be considered tangible, acceptable healing arts. Not talked about, you know, like I have a shirt that says compassion. That, no, that's not what I mean. I mean the actual act of compassion. And compassion really means this. You know, it's not like, oh, I believe in compassion, you know, Buddha, compassion. And I mean people will heal more of their psyche when someone hears them with compassion and no judgment. When someone holds space, they step into it. See, there's not doing involved in any of these things I'm naming. It's being. Now, I can be a healer technician today. I could be a surgeon, a massage therapist, or just a, whatever, a mommy and a daddy. And I can still practice these new healing arts techniques. You, you know, it's not like someday I hope to. We can just do this wherever we are. But please know that you're doing it so it ramps up your work. Okay? The third one is a strange wording. What it was coming to me, though, is certainty. That was the word. And then I went, well, okay, certainty, but for clarification, certainty slash confidence. What this means is there's a healing art called you being clear and certain of what you're saying and doing for others meaning affirmation, certainty. You are going to be fine. You know, and when someone hears you saying, it's gonna be fine, that's powerful, that's healing. There's a part of us that goes, really? How, how do you know? I just know. I remember 19, mid-1980s, before your time. In the mid-1980s, I remember um, these, these couple of students of mine, I, I taught a class at a college, and these couple of students of mine, they came to me a couple days later, so they said, we have to tell you a funny story. We were at uh, lunch, because they were attendees of the college, and they said we were at lunch, and we started overhearing these two ladies, to three ladies talking, and one of them was saying to the others, yeah, I took this class from this guy, and I, I don't know what it was. When he talked, he was so confident in what he was saying, and they looked at each other and go, that's gotta be Michael. If you ever do an exorcism, here's how you don't do it. <laughs> Bill's a bub. <laughs> Hi, um, Michael here. I, I just wanted to see if we could be friends. And um, you know, you, you be you, I'll be me. And you'll just stop tormenting this family, agreed? Okay. No, that's not, that's not how it's gonna happen. You walk in. I have arrived. Who's the I? Not the little I, not the ego I. This is God. I've walked in and I'm bringing God and all the power of God with me. I don't know what your trip is, but you've got 10 seconds to pack up and be gone. You have to have that clarity. A surgeon, 
I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm going to take care of you. Really? Wow. Certainty, apparent. See, clarity, certainty, confidence. We have to see that in you for us to trust going into healing. It's a healing art for you to become clearer and affirming in life, in whatever form. You can, you can be dealing with a, a, you know, a child that, that, a, of your own or someone else's or even a friend or a client of yours, and they just feel like nothing works, nothing works. You can bring healing by not believing that. It's going to be fine. I've said this example many times. If ever you do hospice work or you're with somebody who's passing over and they say, I'm scared, what you don't do is go, yeah, I would be too, man. Wow, you're, you're out of here soon and God only knows what's on the other side. <laughs> I mean, you know, if, if you believe some things, you're, you're going to be in hell in just about 10 seconds and you'll be there eternally. Or you can say, oh, no, I believe uh, you're going to just come back. You remember your mom who you didn't like? That'll, that'll be your dad next time. I mean, you can give people that kind of talk. It's not nice. You know what I would do? I would look at them and say, oh, my God, I admire you. Do you know that moments from now you're like in the light? Please put in a good word for me. Help them feel safe. And I'm not telling you to make this up. I know this is the truth. I know they're going to be fine. So be that confidence, and that's healing for people. And the fourth one that I'll talk about today is trust. Trust is a really tricky one because, wow, the healing power of trust. Trust means I'm trusting not your human frail self. I'm trusting in your divinity. And it, it sort of, each of these overlaps a little bit. So trust almost sounds a little like compassion, a little like certainty and, and confidence. But trust is very, very powerful. Yeah, trust, it's like, I, I believe in who you really are. I, I, I know that, you know, the real you. And, uh, and trust can even, as they all can, but it incorporates, it can incorporate affection, compassion, or confidence as needed. It's on an as needed basis. Trust, man, it's fantastic stuff. Uh, people, people think trust is a vulnerable thing, a dangerous thing. Oh, you know, you got to be careful who you trust. You've heard those kinds of statements. I don't trust anyone. See, and trust all these healing arts are dangerous. Affection can be misinterpreted. Uh, uh, compassion. You can look weak. Oh, you and your compassion. These people are just bad, mean people, and you're like, let me hold them in a loving space. You, all these can look weak because to the material world, spiritual things look unhealthy or weak or whatever else. And yes, the confident one, uh, you know, that's scary to people. Any of these things I'm naming, let's be clear about this. You can't just go, okay, God, download trust. And God's going to go, let me first give you an experience called doubt. You want to learn trust? Let's work through doubt. You know, you want to learn, learn compassion? Let's look at judgment. So it's not like there's just like, as soon as you request it, you're bestowed these medals. Hi, I'm now the God, goddess of compassion, trust, and so on and so on. You can't even ask for just inner peace and get inner peace. To a degree, you can. But it's not sustaining until you become inner peace. If you only get it for a moment, you only got it for a moment. The universe is going to go, OK, wait, you're asking, we, we, you know, do, 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 do. OK, we picked up by telegraph that you're wanting inner peace or you want to develop trust. Um, were you wanting just kind of a quick drive through restaurant version of that or, you know, like, Trust, okay, oh wow, I felt a moment of trust. Woke up this morning, I felt compassion. Great, and it passes. First annoying person you run into. What spirit's gonna say is, are, are, are you wanting that? Okay, here you go. Or you say, no, no, I'm serious. And they're like, wait, wait, what? Wait, what, what, what? You're serious? Yes, I want the real deal, and I want it permanently. As a state of consciousness, whoa. You know, the spirit, all the beings of light, they're like, wow, hush my beak. Like, this is like, you've got to be kidding me. You want the real deal? All right. Are you sure? Yes. 
all right, gather around guides and so forth, you know, sign them up. Um, they're going to, right? Be careful what you ask for. Sign them up. They're, they're, they're asking for, they don't know they're asking for this, but I'm telling you what they're asking. They're asking for lessons in compassion, which means, you know, show them some really challenge, challenging, gut-wrenching things to, to test and see if they can own compassion, affection, you know. Oh, I, 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 I'm ready. I, I'm ready to open up to affection. And as soon as somebody accidentally rushes against your arm, oh, my God, my energy systems are all off. You know, you got to work through this stuff. Here's a, an example of, of a, a story I've shared many times, right? Um, high school, okay, I met this girl, ended up marrying her later, but met this girl, and, um, you know, a wonderful girl. And I remember one time she was wearing this pendant, and I looked at it and I said, oh, nice, I was going to look, and she, <gasps> with, with a, a really good quantity of having been child, you know, child abuse, she, she shrunk back and like, oh, no, 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 nobody, I don't let anybody touch me in this area, it's, you know. So what I did is I said, okay, and I, I took a moment and said, all right, well, here comes affection, trust, compassion, certainty, all those came through as a kid. I said, all right, I have an idea. Let me just put the back of my hand this close. And I reached forward, no reaction, oh, nice, see? And then how about, uh, I'm gonna point at it, but a distance, a little closer, back of my hand eventually touching the pendant, you know, like so, and then eventually I picked it up and flicked it a little bit, and you know, then I touched her neck area here, touched, and then more and more, eventually I put my hands on her throat, her neck, things that gave her negative triggers, and it was no problem. That is using all those skills, but it is using touch. What's this called? Reprogramming. Now the old stuff wasn't there. But I had to do it at the right pace. I, I get sometimes so clear, so confident, so ex in fact excited that it's easy for me to slip sometimes and go, go too fast with a situation like this because I know it's going to work. I know they're going to be fine. But you've got to respect where they're at. So. You have to learn to communicate. Hey, are you okay with, and, and if people tell you, yeah, go ahead and, you know, the pendant thing, and then they freak out, I mean, you feel yucky about it. But you, you, you know, you, me, any of us, we can only go with as far as we knew to go. They said it was okay, but sometimes it didn't feel okay. So that gets really tricky, and I have to keep myself in check and watch myself all the time with that. To, to all of us do, if we're healers, you know, acupuncture needles, they seem to be doing fine. I could use one more pair of needles, but this can really trigger the system. Do I or don't I? You can ask them, do you feel da 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 da? They can say yes, and it could be over triggering for them, right? Now they're doubting it, you're doubting it, and everybody got thrust backwards a couple steps into doubt. Maybe I shouldn't be an acupuncturist. Maybe I shouldn't have, maybe they should, oh, you can't trust people. That is the ego. Please, please try not to listen to that voice. You can step back, recalibrate, breathe, but then please step back. Uh, I, I've shared many, you know, well, a few times that um, trusting somebody to do a massage, this guy, you know, and, and he cracked a rib of mine or broke a rib as he was doing it. I'm not the type to talk about what someone like that did. I'm not saying you should be like this. I'm saying I, I'm not the type. It, it happened. And it's going to tempt me to not get body work. You follow? Or not trust men or whatever your trigger is. I refuse to do that. I waited a little while, healed up, went back. He almost did it again. I told him, no, you're almost there. He said, no, I got it. No, no. Stop. Ease up. Now go elsewhere. See? It's all you have to do is step back, breathe, recalibrate, step back into the trust. Don't give up. Now, if you give up, you can blame other people for it. You can blame your old programs or people. Neither of those is true. You're going to be empowering old programs if you blame them. Well, I, I would like affection, but it's not to be in this lifetime because I have childhood abuse or past life abuse. How's that working for you? How, how, how's that bringing you over the bridge to healing? See it, own it, work on it. And you'll know if you get triggered, you know, the guy crack a rib, you know. 
You'll know because did you lose love for that person? Can you still love them? Can you forgive them? And can you trust again? And also, can you communicate? I did those things. I l still loved. I still forgave. I communicated, though. And I trusted the guy. But he almost did it again. That's not the point. I communicated. That prevented it from becoming a trauma memory that controlled whether I go to get a massage or not. Is that all making sense? Yeah. All right, cool. So to me, it's, it's extraordinary to imagine that Healing the psyche, believe it or not, your psyche is more, it's closer to who you are than your body. So learning to trust healing systems beyond allopathic medicine has taken a lot. Some of us have family members that still, the majority of your family members probably still, there's no way they can trust holistic healing. Oh, yeah, you went to that acupuncturist, huh? Yeah, it's, and then he tells your other family member, yeah, voodoo, you know, where they put the needles in. <laughs> yeah, boy, kind of weird. No, I don't, I, 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 it's not just acupuncturist. The acupuncturist is also an herbalist. Oh, witchy poo, you know. Yeah, they make up some concoctions of, yeah, and then they start laughing and you're sitting there either humiliated or shy or whatever triggers you get from this because they're making fun of your belief systems. Until the day they're in enough pain, this life or another, and they have to reach out for something else. And that's trust that that's going to happen. Everybody in their time. My, my father, my human father, was really, really harsh, aggressive kind of a person. But it was the funniest thing. Me, the person on this planet that he liked the least. And at some point in his life, hey, why don't you do some of that weird healing stuff? Now, did I go, not until you call it by its proper name. <laughs> I want you to say, Michael, can you do your hands-on Christ-centered, you know, <laughs> download of higher dimensional? No. I just said, yeah, whatever, and boom, boom, boom. And he's like, oh, that is amazing. I, I've never, nobody gets me out of discomfort but him. You don't need them to always, you know, come to your level. Bridge with them. I mean, because by being there, He's healing even though he doesn't know it. He's healing his rudeness. On some level, his soul knows the way he is. And he knows that by humbling himself and saying, can you do some of that? It, the wording, he wasn't going to get to that point yet. The people in your life might not get to that point yet. What's the number one thing that can prevent any of these new healing arts or other you know, holistic healing to, from working? Fear. And the ego fans the flame of fear in people, makes them doubt. The last thing you want to be doing when you have something extraordinary shifting in your life is go and ask your neighbors about it. Don't go and ask your mother. Well, you know, we don't believe in that. We're not that religion. Well, is the one working for you that you did practice? You know, like, come on, mom. You know, lighten it up. So be careful because... When you go and ask your friends or whomever, hey, I'm, I'm doing this uh, technique. This guy was doing this technique about touching the necklace, and, you know, and, and it was really amazing because I wasn't afraid anymore. Oh, that's bad. Oh, my counselor said, you know, that there, nobody should touch you, you know, and my counselor, I hugged her once, and she shamed me for it and said, don't ever hug people. You know, this is this, I, I said, like, I, I, yeah, I was just almost doing, like, Richard next, blah, blah, blah. you know, this, <laughs> you know, this gripey kind of, blah, 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 old school, don't touch, you know. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of weird, isn't it? That grumpy kind of old, but it, that's what it is. It's old school stuff. Whatever you do, don't trust, don't love. You know, don't be so naive as to feel compassion for bad people. And yet, God is trying to tell you the opposite. You know, you're, it, God's outnumbered. You have billions of people on the planet telling you one thing and God saying another. But only one of them makes any sense. Only one of them's telling us the truth. Only one of them's telling us things that aren't fear-based. However, the ego will have in its repertoire all kinds of evidence, be careful, you know. Here's a book on people that got hurt by trusting. Here's a book on, you know, uh, uh, inappropriate 
you know, contact, uh, affection or whatever. I know that the world has plenty of evidence of misused versions of these. But if they're misused versions, then they're not those. There's no such thing as misused trust, technically. Technically. Technically, trust is of God and it can't be misused because if you're only trusting in the divine, how are you going to get hurt? Your hurts with trust came from either you trusting in untrustworthy parts of people. Well, I, I didn't know, you know, my partner was going to do this. Well, how did their five restraining orders on them not tell you that? You know, like, so you kind of, you, you know, don't trust in the untrustworthy parts. You don't, you don't want to say to somebody, uh, listen, I know that you've been arrested five times for theft, but can you take my money to the bank and make a deposit? It, it's, that's, you're being, you're being foolish. And you go, oh no, I was channeling. I was like, God bless us. And God's like, don't do it. Uh, bless us and, and guide me and let this person be an act, you know, an angel, living angel and do the deposit. Now they're in like Mexico, margaritas. And you're like, I don't have any money. I don't know what happened. And God's going, don't even ask. You don't want to hear the answer. Goof. You don't want to hear the answer. I told you don't. Not because trust is bad. Because don't put trust in untrustworthy things. Don't trust the ego to not be the ego. Real trust means you're trusting in the divinity. But it also means that while I'm training on what trust is and learning to acknowledge and live from a place of trust, I still have to sort of check in. Ultimately, if we, if any of us truly practiced healthy affection, trust, compassion, certainty, do you realize that people would rise from the dead? When you know and trust they cannot be sick, they will rise from the dead. So obviously we're not quite there yet. But what if the day will come that you'll say, I trust in who you are and you can't be sick. Boom, they come out of the grave. Great, healed. But in the meantime, it's going to be practiced in day-to-day -day relationships. You know, you might not be going to the morgue in hospitals yet and saying, oh, and they rise from the dead. For now, why don't you just work on people that are dead emotionally? People that don't know how to feel hope. You see? So it's true that pra practicing trust in the unhealthy or untrustworthy parts of people can cause us problems. That doesn't mean that real trust is untrustworthy. It's just the ego temporary versions. But the, one of the amazing things to me is that, again, the training of this is a direct download into our souls. So. There's no like experience and evidence and schools th to support all this. We're, all, we're kind of flying the seat of our pants with these new things. So there's this concept like uh, affection, what is healthy affection, what's not. What's healthy compassion, what's extreme and, and enabling. What's certainty versus arrogance? Because they sound similar when you see them in an unhealthy form. I know, I, I see it, I, I get it, and, and you, you know, you can sound overly confident. And even trust. There's a bridge to healing that goes from wounded to free. There's a bridge. Anybody healing anything has to go over the bridge of healing. But the bridge of healing, trust is just past the midpoint. Trust, just past the midpoint. So if you want to heal and move forward in your life, you've got to learn to trust. But before you learn to trust, there's a word on this side, still on this side of the bridge called control, which means the recipient has to feel as though they are in what? Control. Once they are in control, you can, like for example, when I said to that gal, I will not touch your pendant. Now with your permission control, can I do, just come close, sure, see? So I had to give her control instead of just, oh, that's nice, where she felt she didn't have any say, so can I do that? Yes, she's in control, a little more, a little more, a little more, and then eventually, now I'm gonna put my hands on your neck, go ahead, no effect, because she had gone over the bridge into trust, okay? 
this afternoon we have a workshop uh, on healing the heart and so on. I'll talk a lot more about healing and the bridge to healing, but still, trust. Now, if someone says, you know, I, I'm going to uh, touch this pendant, you know, working with them at a pace that they can handle. If they say, uh, oh, no, 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 th th that's freaking me out. Only, only do the hand close. The rest is too much. You sit, step back, love, forgive, communicate. It's important to communicate when you have those triggers because if you don't, the mind will program, I'm traumatized again. If you talk about it, did you see that I went only this far, right? Okay, and if I went further, it triggered you, right? We both get that. Now, can we agree, step back, love, forgive, and be at peace? Make that the new norm. Make that progress the new norm. You can say, yeah, but I didn't fully trust. Fully shmooly. You're, you don't worry about it. Don't judge it. Don't uh, label it a failure. Look, at, look what you did. Good job. And that's the same way I'm going to talk to myself if I'm the one having that greater uh, boost towards compassion or trust or affection or whatever. I'm going to be the one to, to say to myself, every bit of progress is healing. Own that. The ego wants you to look at the cup being half empty. You didn't get it all done. Failure. Trauma. And then your mind is going to get Unfortunately, your mind is then going to start manifesting support for that. You know, you talk to your girlfriend, oh, this person touched my necklace, and oh, you should have never done that. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have. That was bad. And they start enforcing it. Now you're worse off than when you started because now you're shaming your progress. Okay? Moving forward, moving forward. New life, new levels of, of trust and affection. Oh, wow, you know, this is really great. I remember a, a lady I did a session for prior to a Sunday service. And, um, you know, hers was just really shut down. Men, touch, affection, all this stuff. Partnership completely ruled out. So we finished the session. She felt really good. I said, well, you know, there's like 10 minutes before the service. I said, you want to go for a walk? And I took her hand, and we walked hand in hand around the parking lot while people were arriving. What was the point of hand in hand? Which can make somebody, you know, think things, right? That could be misconstrued. All I can do is say, by the way, I'm not hitting on you, but can I take your hand? You know, just try to clarify that. But does anybody here understand what happened by walking hand in hand with this person that there's no way, no contact anywhere from anyone? Do you, do you get, I mean, I understand your head could also say that's weird. I get that. I'm not asking for that. Do you see the value? Yes. A new norm, hand in hand. And do you realize right now, you're hand in hand with somebody who doesn't live here, isn't in, you know, interested in anything more. You, this is now perfect by itself. Now, if you got this right, guess what might be coming tomorrow? Someone that actually lives in a theater near you, you know, um, coming to a theater near you, right? It's, you're going to get closer and closer because we walked through it on a tangible, three-dimensional level. You see, we, we walked through it. You've been there now. If it's too foreign, they'll still try to shut it down. So even the first of these skills, one called affection, becomes a bridge. If I would have said to the gal wearing the pendant, well, you know what? If I did this, 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 you'd probably be okay. And she would go, oh, I'm healed now that you told me I would have. It was the doing of it that anchored it. And it's the same if I stand here and talk to you about prosperity and abundance and not practice it. It's another thing, prosperity and abundance, and then to help somebody in a grocery line or wherever. You see, you, you say to them, and, and I do. I don't just go, oh, you know, here you go. Oh, thank you. Oh, no problem. I often will say something like that. Well, you know, you deserve it. I'll plant a point and not just a bill, a dollar bill. I'll make a point because it anchors it more, just like affection anchors it more, handing the money, making a statement. All of these things can become very clear and tangible. And that takes the healing to a whole other level, much higher level. Okay? 
So keep this in mind. New healing arts are being, they're, they're not new statements. They're not new words. They're not new concepts. But understanding that they are going to be now more and more embraced as actual healing arts. And that's going to happen. And it, it is happening now. People don't realize. I mean, you and I are being trained in these, but most people don't realize they're being trained because they didn't sign up for an academic third dimensional school. But there are people being trained. So now telling you this, I hope some of you are going light bulb, light bulb, light, you know. Oh my God, I was just talking to a friend about affection the other day. Oh my God, a, a, a compassion. I, some people talk about compassion, it annoys me because it's all enabling or they say it, but they don't practice it. Now you're going, I get it. Compassion is a healing art. And I'm going to step into the real version of compassion. The compassion that says the wounded you could not, would not do these kinds of things nor experience these kinds of things. So the compassion in me is holding safe emotional space for your emotional self and your emotional body and your emotional experiences. I get it. You see, I did this session just the other day and a woman from, and I hope you guys don't mind that I share examples from sessions. Somebody could have been one of these sessions and, oh, you know, oh my God, I'm offended. Nobody knows, you know, who you are and all that. And besides, it may not have even been you because some of the sessions are similar. But this woman from um, far away, um, <laughs> but it was on earth, I swear, it was, it was on earth. But she said, you know, Michael, I've only been into spirituality a short time. I've never, I've been so hurt, I've never trusted anybody, including God. And then I saw a video of yours, and, and I trust you, and you're the only person I trust. Now, you can hear that in all kinds of ways and so on. What I hear is, I'm a bridge. I don't hear I'm the goal. I hear, nice, nice. And what do you think, whatever it is about me that you trust is, is halfway home. Because as you now start to trust more people and God, well, I don't know if I can trust more people yet. It doesn't have to be. You got this one down pretty well. It'll become more people and God itself. And she's like, yes, I'm praying and I'm trusting God more. It's what an amazing compliment to hear. Now know this, you're the partner, the friend, the child of, the parent of, whatever roles you play in life. If you're the one who plays the role of holding space of compassion, giving them techniques of trust, come on out, trust me, it's okay. You see, and so on. Do know this, a person's gonna be tempted to make you the target of their ego reaction to those things. It's true. You might say to somebody, let me help you work on compassion. I'm having compassion with you. And your abuser, let's, let's practice some compassion. They could leave it going, wow, I felt so clear and free. Then they can go talk to a friend. You should not have been told to have compassion for that bad person that was in your life. Shame, 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 shame. And then you're the bad guy that told them that. That, I, I cannot promise you, you'll ever be um, in this material dimension that we're still in that you'll ever be completely free of, the, uh, uh, of that possibility. It's, it is a possibility. You can tell a sister of yours about trust. You can tell a client about trust. And they might inadvertently hear you thinking that you're, uh, they might think that you're telling them to trust in that new date they're having. And it could go badly and they're gonna blame you for telling them to trust that new date. But that wasn't your intention and that's all you can do is share with them the truth of what's, what's happening. They're going to be tempted to react, but why? Because they're afraid. Why? Because their ego's telling them, don't you dare trust. And if they got to blame somebody, it's likely going to be you. You will never heal. You will never evolve. You will never ascend while blaming other people for your lack of it. You will never learn to feel more love by blaming other people for your lack of love or compassion, or trust. I would trust, but, you know, so-and-so. You just threw the power outside of yourself. So you're not going to trust. Pull it in, reel it in. And lastly, this is happening at two levels. The teachers are receiving this download. 
If it's too much for you to become one of these practitioners, tell spirit, unsign me up. Okay? I, I want to be, you know, taken off of the list. I want to just be a recipient from others. Let them guide me slowly. God will have no problem with that. But chances are, if it is directly downloading to you, you probably are ready. You know, you might just kind of live with it. Eh, maybe God knows what it's doing. Maybe more than you, you know. But um, it's not to say that the healers aren't going through these steps. We are, but we're doing it with life and spirit more than practitioners. Does that make sense? So whichever way you're going to get this, as a practitioner or as a recipient from practitioners, please, please embrace the healthiness of affection, the power of affection, the, oh, the tranquility of compassion, the clarity of certainty, and the absolute surrender when we learn to feel trust. All this is happening for us. And um, everybody's got to get that the easy way or the hard way. And I highly recommend the easy way. Don't forget to say thank you to anybody that gives you any amount of this, including God itself, direct mother, you know, downloads. When you see that someone helped you learn a little more trust, say thank you. It lessens the chance that your ego will hijack your mind and make them the blame. You've already said thank you. We're good. We're good. You did better with trust. You did better with compassion. You did better with affection. I know that we can mess it up here and there. We slip a little here and there. Just please, one step back, recalibrate. Love, forgive, communicate, and then move forward again. Thank you. Please take a few... <laughs> Thank you. Who knew? Um, <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> Isn't it good? Isn't it just great to live in this? Thank you. And I, I greatly appreciate um, we're having to get our priorities straight. And part of this is about getting our priorities straight. So you sit there going, yeah, but I, there's three reasons why I don't want to feel trust. There's four reasons why I never want affection. And compassion, no, no, no. And you can name all those. Let me tell you something. This is inevitable. Give your reasons. Then watch when the worlds collide. Watch when planet Earth has pole shifts, solar flares, meltdowns of the ice, you know, and so on. Wait for that. And let's see how much you want to think about all those reasons you had to not trust. Here's what's going to happen. Everybody is going to be pulled into the present moment. And hey, how about now? Well, I still want to, you know, kind of blame them. And they're kind of annoying. Enough pain, you'll be like, okay, no, got it. Okay, now. Love, compassion, peace, healing, and it'll become a huge priority. But you don't have to get there through more pain. Centering breaths. Oh, expansive. Mm. Mm. Expansive. Gratitude. Anything you heard, felt, experienced that you liked today. The person you sat by, the notes of music, the intention of our folks here, the teaching. I choose to see it, to own it, to be grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. More than the words and the sounds of the music, there's a consciousness download. I say thank you, thank you, thank you, God.
imagine standing before an altar. And on this altar, pictures, memories, videos, statuaries, whatever it is, symbolizing every person that ever harmed your sense of trust, compassion, affection, and confidence. Holy Mother of the universe, we ask you to help determine what should appear to us on this altar. You know best the unhealed pieces and we'll spend the next moment letting all of this materialize. Watch it objectively, let them all materialize. If you cry, you cry. If you feel afraid, feel afraid, but stay with it. Just witness what manifests on the altar. see all of these expressions of unhealthy or painful experiences. I can choose to condemn, to judge and condemn every one of these, but it just doesn't serve me. It doesn't help them to rise to higher levels of consciousness, which means my lack of ability to see them properly keeps them stuck in their behaviors, which means more people will be hurt. That's not my choice today. I'm not denying that I felt hurt, but I'm doing something different with it. All of you images, I surrender to the Holy Spirit of God. My mind, my head, my thinking in no way can do as much for you as the Divine Mother. And so I give you to her heart. And just watch all the items turn to light and rise into the heavens. I seem to have hurt, even if it wasn't my intention and they thought it so. To all of you, my absolute heartfelt apology. Even if it was my intention, my apology. 
to anything I've ever done that was the doing or the lack of doing that people wanted. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. The real me honors the real you. And we're rising together into a new dimensionality. And in that new dimensionality, the old hurts don't exist. Therefore, I cannot rise while holding them. They serve as anchors. I'm not wrong for feeling hurt. If I shed a tear again tomorrow, it's okay. Because I'm going to hold myself in higher levels of compassion. I'm going to be more affectionate with myself. Healthy affection. Letting people hug and sharing hugs. Getting massages. Hand holding. All when it feels light and right. No shaming. If I shame my body, I'm stuck in my body. No shaming the foods I eat or don't eat. New levels of certainty and clarity. I know that it can be arrogance by some people's standards, but if God is with me, what could be against me? I'm just speaking from a greater loving knowingness. And I'm grateful. Trust. I'm trusting in trust itself. God. If God be with me, what could be against me? I trust. I trust in divinity in God and others and my own. Not foolish leaping, expecting others to catch me. Knowing that even if today I have to say no because of uncertainties around what to trust, the good news is I know the day is coming when there would be no need for that. So even if today I back off Tomorrow, I know it will be, which allows me to more confidently accept it today. I am as God created me. I will to be the Christ on earth. I welcome healthy affection, compassion, certainty, and trust into my life. And those of us who choose to do so right now, those of us who choose to do so. Otherwise, we can say, no, nope, I'm just holding on to what I'm doing right now. I'm just at peace. I'm enjoying. But if you're ready, you can say, and Divine Mother, Holy Spirit of God, I welcome you to initiate me as one of these new healers. Activate the necessary cells in my brain, the necessary consciousness in my mind, my soul, Activate the necessary healing within my own centers, clearing out all that is unlike this new self. And we close with an anointing, a sealing of all that's been said, prayed, accepted. A sealing that this is your new truth. If you chose to be initiated into this or not, as we are, what we've chosen, we are being sealed. Centers, aura, consciousness, self, our soul. Put in an envelope of love. in, humming just mm, a yummy, again, yummy feeling. Mm. 
more confidently mouth open, toning for a minute or two straight together. Inhale, know and acknowledge the presence, the love, the God, and now. Breathe when you need to and keep it going. a hand or two on your heart and accept this. I choose this and nothing else. And to all others that we can now, to a new level, accept healthy levels of affection, compassion, certainty, and trust saying to them, I trust this and nothing else. And so it is. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Thanks for that hug of affection. Wow. <laughs> Isn't this fun? Yeah. yeah, God. Yeah. Wonderful stuff. My God. Yeah. You know, heart and soul and... If you're not signed up for our workshop, you can still do that. Healing the heart and soul. Ah. Uh, we're going to uh, take a moment, take up our collection, and do our closing prayer. Please, from your heart, from your heart, give. Be as generous as you can be. And I want to add, um, those of you who can do extra, um, we're going to um, get a new air conditioning system. Um, and um, the, the one outside for people that are meditating and hanging out, it's a little loud. It still works, but it's, 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 it's old. Um, I think Noah was involved in the construction of it. It's that old. Um, but a new air conditioning system, which would be more efficient in terms of energy usage as well, is 20 grand. Um, you can write a check for 20 grand only if it's good. You're good for it. Or any amount to that effect, even if it's half. Um, Unity, we've decided we're going to do our best to raise the funds ourselves, the board, and try to match 10 grand to 10 grand if we can at least get that. But if somebody can even do more, it's wonderful. But we're just letting you know. All right? Thank you. Be as generous as you can be, not just in what you give us. Be as generous as you can be in your gratitude to being a part of what we're all sharing here in this experience, online around the world and live in person here. Hold that to your heart. Together, please, divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Thank you. Mm. So while they're passing those around, like I said, in just about a minute or two, we'll do our closing prayer. A couple of quick notes. First of all, 
Robert, are you in the room? There he is. Robert, please stand. Robert has just been going way over, to, uh, over the top in keeping our property cleaned off and trimmed and, yeah, so Robert, thank you. We love you, brother, and never feel, you know, we never feel taking that for granted. Oh, we constantly, consistently thank you for that. Um, let's see. Crystal bed therapy sessions, you know, you can use the, it's the healing room outside there. Um, crystal bed sessions are available, especially if you're from out of town, you could take advantage of having it right here, but you can book those all through the week. Um, I really, really give thanks and feel so much gratitude and so forth for the, uh, the bookstore, the gifts, book and gift store. It's just beautiful. I love what we carry. We're selective of the kinds of everything, books, incense. We, we really are selective to get the best. Um, and so I'm really grateful there. And the bookstore on average is probably 30% less than anywhere else. You don't have to pay tax here versus some of the stores. And I think the stores are beautiful. So by all means, you know, you, you can visit those and enjoy getting things there too. But it is, uh, you'll save about 30% on average if you get your things here. Um, let's see, today we have our workshop. So you're welcome to sign up for that, Healing the Heart and Soul. It's a few hours this afternoon. Um, I want you to remember uh, when it comes to parking, some people are occasionally parking on that, the dirt lot to this side of us. That's somebody else's property. You use our parking lot. We have a lot of spots. And across the street, the former bank, what was a bank, that parking lot you can use. All right? And um, I want to extend deep gratitude to our performer again today, John Dumas. Yes. And to Jade for the support during the meditation music. Just amazing guys. All right, I think that's it for us. Um, join us on YouTube, where we post these after the fact. Um, and um, you can join us live like now, w watching our services. And I'm also really happy that we, when we have concerts here, we stream them around the world. So by all means, it's not just the service. You can tune into other things that we do. Not every single thing we do, but many of them are streamed live, so you can check them out. But you can watch us here. If you're watching this on YouTube or wherever, by all means, please be uh, gracious. Um, hit, you know, check it, like it, subscribe it, share it. Uh, only with people you feel truly are into this. We're not into quantity. We really aren't. We're really not. We're not looking for, you know, droves of people that are disinterested. Um, share it with people. Use your discretion. You know. Uh, you go and give a, a, a video of ours to a family member of yours that's not into this. They might be into certain religions that don't dig this. And, and you know, and they click on it. And they're going to see, you know, John, you know, and, and Jade, you know, and I'm like, you know, they're going to be like, what kind of hippy dippy crap did you send me? Um, don't do that to them. And if you do, it's bad karma. So don't do it. Don't irritate them unnecessarily. Um, share it with people that you know have an open heart and an open mind. That's what we're enjoying and looking for. So God bless you. Please stand for our closing prayer. Oh. How'd you dig it today? How'd you, how'd you do? Oh, nice, nice. Did it make sense, the healing power of affection? Yes or no? Yes. Oh, good. How about the new levels of the healing power of compassion? Yeah. Did we get that to a new level? Yeah. Great. What about certainty? Yeah. Boom. I'm right. Clarity. Yes. And trust. Can we do it? Yes. Mm. So any suggestion, but can we do a group hug? Oh. I don't know how anyone feels about that, but I'll tell you on talk. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know how you would uh, do that. Just kind of like a little hug. But if they, if people in your rows, scoot in a little closer. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> so that, they're doing a group hug. People online, we're doing a big group hug. Okay, now, now, keep it appropriate. Okay. <clears throat>
So it's beautiful. Group hug. Hang on to that. Oh, it's a symbol of together and trusting, right? Trusting. Your mind can do all kinds of things. Why are we doing group hugs? What, what's, you know, and so on. The, that's the ego mind. It's okay. If I were to pass away tomorrow or an hour from now, I left this world with a group hug in my memory, with new levels of trust and companionship, friendship, you see, affection. Yes, this is the state of mind that I'm looking for. And it is the state of mind I'm choosing now. This is my space. This is where I'm going. <sighs> the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. We are the, love of God. the power of God protects us. We are the power of God. And the presence of God watches over us. We are the presence of God. Wherever we go, God, God is, is, I am, we, we are, are, and so it is. Take a deep breath. And just one sentence I'm sharing with you. Anybody in this room or beyond that still feels like, you know, well, no, no, I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm apprehensive and it's no problem. We already see you at that place of healed. It's, it's okay. You're not wrong for feeling apprehension. This world beats that into us. But can you consider opening up at least just a bit and letting love shine in? Peace be with you all. Thank you for your time. God bless you.